I'm glad you've come, though I'm afraid there's little in the way of good news. After you left, we reached out to both the Alchemist's Guild and Stillglade Fane and attempted all manner of treatments. But the results were always the same. Whatever the answer is, it's not alchemy or conjury. Why did it have to be Yishtola and Orianger and not me? Out of all of us, they are the ones who could feasibly have solved this puzzle. And Elfino's still missing. God, it's all going wrong. Where do we even start? A grave situation indeed. Might I be of some assistance? Kryl! I did not think you well enough to travel. When word reached me of the plight of our friends, I could not well stay away. As a fellow scion, not to mention your erstwhile mentor, this is one of those times you should feel free to call on me. Regardless of my personal circumstances. I... yes, I should have thought of that. Thank you for coming, Kryle. We would welcome your insight. And I should be happy to provide it. Now, what's this I hear about Alphano heading into Imperial territory? That boy always did have some funny ideas. Do you remember the speech he gave when he was accepted to the studium? My life's goal is not less than the salvation of this star. <laughs> <laughs> that particular grand pronouncement has been a source of great embarrassment to him, as you know. But, the fact of the matter is, he meant every word and has lived his life accordingly. Yes, he remains altruistic to a fault, but I'm worried he was too fixated on his goals to see the dangers, as has happened before. You needn't be so concerned. Though his values remain the same, Alphano is not the blinkered boy he once was. Slowly but surely his eyes have been opened, thanks to a certain someone. A certain someone whom he'd be mortified to learn had heard about his little speech. Mum's the word, eh? Right, I'd better have a look at our patients. They're in the infirmary, I assume. I'll need absolute quiet, so it would be best if I did this alone. If you'll excuse me. All three are in fine physical health. At a glance, I would say they were merely sound asleep. Except for the fact that I couldn't sense the slightest trace of them in their bodies. It's as if their souls have taken leave of their physical forms. Ah, yes. The Elder Seed Seer made a similar observation. I've read the report. When you heard this mysterious voice, you described feeling as if you were somewhere else, yes? If we assume the ether which comprises your essence is being drawn to some other place, then it may be possible to follow the trail it leaves behind, just as we did in our search for Thancred. I wasn't around for that, but I can't imagine it was easy. Oh, it wasn't. But that's no reason not to try. I will have need of Master Matoya's crystal eye if I'm even to make the attempt. So, I suggest we pay her a visit.
come to disturb my peace again, have you? I hide myself away in a cave, and still you people insist on pestering me with your problems. Oh, I mistook you for young Watch's name, but I see now you're the sister. Weren't you supposed to be the lively one? I've seen happier faces at a rain sodden burial. Well, I'm sorry to dash your expectations, but the situation isn't exactly conducive to gaiety. Ha! <laughs> That's more like it. Stoller used to spit and hiss like a wildcat, too. Better for a young thing like you to be filled with fire and leave the doom and gloom to your elders. Now, what exactly does this tragic situation of yours have to do with me? If I may, Master Matoya, we have need of your crystal eye once more. Stola is one of the afflicted, is she? Very well. She may be an ungrateful stray, but she's my ungrateful stray, and I'll not see her buried before I am. Right. Let us see what we can see. I'll begin from where our friends first fell, and cast my senses out from there. What is it? Did you find them? This, this, this doesn't make sense. How is it even possible? How is what possible? Kryl, what did you see? The, th the threads, they just... they just ended. And, and no, I didn't lose track of them. I followed them as far as they went. It's as if... It's as if they were cut off. Could the ether have dissipated if it had? Oh, oh gods! Their bodies are just husks. It's like the brood mother's daughter all over again. No, no, th this is different. The Kalyana girl was already dead, body and soul, when Lakshmi affected her resurrection. Aye, let's not jump to conclusions. If their physical forms yet breathe, and show no signs of wasting, then it follows that their souls must still be intact somewhere. But where? That's the question, isn't it, girl? Death has not taken them to the ethereal sea, yet there are no tracks left for us to follow. We're no closer to an answer than when we started. But knowing their souls are still out there is progress of a sort. We just have to keep looking. Pray, excuse me a moment. Yes? I remember, but... What, to Alamigo? We're on our way. That was Lise. 
Apparently, a group of Popularis have defected to Alamigo, and Maxima, the envoy Alphano left with, is one of them. I'm sorry. I realize we've barely begun here, but... Go, child, go! You've made up your mind, and life's too short for dithering. I'll do some digging in the meantime, and see if there isn't some other method we could use to continue the search. Let's be off, then. Oh, not again. The enchantment barely seems to take these days. I chalk it up to old age, but I rather doubt it's that simple. Before they took ill, Yishtola and Urianger were sharing notes on a thinning of the ether. It seems to be happening all over. Does it now? And here I was, all set to blame my woes on that creaking mountain of refuse clogging up the Thaliac. I fear something has gone awry. Still, there's naught to be gained from starting at shadows. You can only do what can be done, and that but one thing at a time. I'm sorry to drag you halfway across the realm, but when Maxima mentioned Alphano, I thought you'd want to hear the news in person. Ah, we meet again. Though I was hoping our reunion would be under more auspicious circumstances. What happened to my brother? 
Where is Alphino? Never fear, my lady. Your brother was in fine health when I took my leave of him, and I have no reason to assume that has changed. You assume? If you will allow me, I shall endeavor to explain events. Our troubles began not long after we departed Doma. While crossing the burn, we were fired upon by the Emperor's personal guard and forced to make an emergency landing. As we stumbled from the wreckage, our attackers fell upon us again, and we would have perished there and then were it not for the intercession of a third party, a band of mercenaries whose leader claimed to pursue a vendetta against the Assians. This Shadow Hunter, as he styled himself, then escorted us out of the wastes to relative safety. Upon arriving back in civilization, I gathered my Popularis colleagues and prepared to flee the Empire. Master Alphino, however, declined the invitation to join us, preferring to continue his investigation into the Assian threat. Well, at least he's not lying in a heap in the burn. Tell us more about these Assian hunters. Who are they? And is Alphano still with them? He is. As to who they are, I'm afraid I have nothing to tell you. Beyond the fact that they root out and destroy Assians, they were unwilling to divulge anything which might serve to identify them. They would not even reveal their next destination. But Master Alphino asked to accompany them all the same. Since parting company with your brother, we've been engaged in a game of cat and mouse with the Emperor's guard. We made our way through province after province, finding the army busy restoring order wherever we went, until we finally arrived here in Alamigo. I cannot thank Commander Aldin enough for giving us such an unexpectedly warm welcome. I'm not inclined to turn away refugees, no matter which land they call home. And if they can tell me how things lie in Garlemald, all the better. On that subject, there is much I would tell you. During the course of our journey, we heard tales that an entire rebel army had been slaughtered in the space of a single night. It would seem my former comrades grew tired of putting down uprisings in the conventional manner, and chose instead to bring a formidable new weapon to bear. Details were sparse, but the rumor alone was enough to dampen the flames of rebellion. I have also heard reports that several companies have withdrawn from their designated provinces and begun marching westward. It is my assessment that the Empire's forces are mobilizing for a large-scale military engagement. Westward? You mean they're getting ready to invade Alamigo? We knew this was coming, but not that it would be so soon. We've barely even begun to shore up our defenses. They won't stop an invading army. No, they won't. Dispatch messengers to the Alliance leadership requesting reinforcements, and send word to our officers in the field to hasten completion of those border fortifications. Prepare to meet the Imperials head on! No matter how quickly we act, we still want for time. When the enemy comes into view, our best recourse will be to open negotiations with their commander, and see that the ensuing proceedings take as long as possible. Would you and Alize head to Doma and let Lord Hien know about this? I'm sure he'll want to hear about Alphino too. Consider it done. We'll send word when... Untold sorrow must be changed. Ahead looms a calamity. Eon become instant. Throw wide the gates! Oh. You heard it.
it too. Well, at least we're both still standing. Oh, thank the gods. I thought we'd lost you for a moment there. Why does this keep happening? I wish I knew. Nothing we've tried has brought us any closer to an answer. We'll keep working on it. But first, we need to go and see Lord Hien.
It seems the engineers have matters well in hand. Should the barrier work as we intend, Dorma will be free to reinforce her allies in Alamigo without fear of weakening her own borders. Honored friends, the time has come to put your hard work to the test. Start the generator. Node 1 is operational. Nodes 2 to 8 are reporting similar energy levels. The barrier is forming. One thousand yams. Two thousand. Three thousand. Expansion remains smooth. No fluctuations detected. Five thousand! Target altitude reached! The barrier is holding steady at five thousand yards! We've done it! Is that an Imperial airship? Of all the rotten timing. But this is a gift, Mistress Alizé. They can test our new wool for us. Seems solid enough, though I was hoping for a fireball. Alpha, no. What are you? Let me go! He has my brother! Lower the barrier! Be at ease, girl. The lad is not dead, merely locked in slumber. No, not him too. We could identify no cause and found no remedy. Thus I sought to return him to Doma, and into the arms of Lord Hien himself, it would seem. It is a day for fated reunions. Would you not agree, adventurer? 
Or should I address you as the Warrior of Light? Gaius van Belsa, the Black Wolf. That was the title I was given, one I have long since relinquished. Stand down. The Legatus of the 14th Imperial Legion died in Castrum Meridianum. I am no more than Gaius Belsa, a man without rank or allegiance. Impossible! There's no way you could have survived! Do you remember how it unfolded? How I was deceived by Lahabrea? How I was convinced that reviving the Ultima Weapon would allow me to bring peace to Eorzea? The Essian used me, as he used so many others, all to further the restoration of his wretched god. Yet even with the might of Alec at my command, you bested me. And as the Praetorium went up in flames, I was content to burn along with it. For a moment, at least. A moment of folly. To surrender my life thus would have been to betray all who died for my cause. It was for them that I dragged myself free of the rubble and swore vengeance on the Assians. The Black Wolf has shed his pelt, never to return to Garlemald or her legions. I live now only to exact revenge. My principal quarry was to be Lahabrea, whom I gather you have since ushered unto oblivion. But so many more remain. Long as their kind lurked in the shadows, laboring to sow chaos throughout our world, I would see each and every one dragged into the light and put to the sword. Are the Scions not of like mind? In this single respect, perhaps. Then I shall continue the partnership the boy began, and share what intelligence I have acquired. Among the Asians, the black-masked ilk are subordinate to those who wear red. This you already know. Yet among the red there exists a hierarchy. Those set adrift with the shards clearly stand below those still joined to the source. Nabriales, who once dared to intrude upon the rising stones, belong to the former group. And while he was indeed a dangerous foe, his powers were inconsequential next to the paragons of the source. The first was Lahabrea, who plagues us no more. There is also the white-robed Elidibus, and the elusive Emmet Selk, about whom little is known. We have files on Lahabrea and Elidibus. But I believe this Emmet Selk is new to us? As I assume my brother told you, we have evidence to suggest that an Asian now walks in the body of the Crown Prince. Have you identified this interloper? Elidibus seems the most likely culprit. As emissary, it is his role to maintain the equilibrium between darkness and light. Your many deeds in Heidelin's name have upset the balance, and I believe he seeks to restore it by throwing his considerable power behind the Empire. As a leader of the Asians, he is one of our primary targets. It was on the trail of this very prey that the boy and I came across the scene of a failed uprising. In the absence of a single Galian casualty, 
We inspected the bodies of the rebels, and the lack of any external injury drew my immediate attention. They had been slain by Black Rose, an alchemical invention of the Imperial Army. When I yet served as Legatus, I ordered its production halted, and all stockpiles destroyed. Toxic gas is not a tool of conquest, but of extermination. Toxic gas? This must be the new weapon Maxima warned us about. Something deadly enough to sweep away all resistance in a matter of hours. Gods. You don't think they're planning to use this in Alamigo, do you? Put your fears to rest. We infiltrated the production facility and destroyed all existing stores of the chemical along with the plant itself. Even should they rebuild the operation, they will not soon manufacture another batch. Regardless, I would draw your attention to a directive we discovered in the plant's records. The document was marked with a recent date and authorized with the signature of one Zeno C. A. Galvis. A dead man signing the death warrant for thousands. Tis bad comedy. But the tale does not end there. Within that same facility was a chamber filled with devices of elegant design. Cloning technology, we realized. And what should we find in each and every incubator? But a young Emperor Solus. All of which prompts the question, were the Asians responsible for these abominations, or was it the will of the Emperor? I must know which hand guides the Empire. Though I have given up my rank, I am yet a son of Garlemald, and I will fight for the future of my homeland. It is time I return to the Hunting of Shadows. We should focus on our common foe. To reopen old quarrels now would serve no purpose. You saved my brother's life, so I'm willing to let sleeping dogs lie. But in truth, it's not my decision to make. There was a time when I scorned those who placed their faith in false gods, even as I, in my blinkered conviction, placed mine in Asian promises. Unlike yours, my strength of will and my restraint was found wanting. We shall meet again, warrior of light. So that was the infamous Black Wolf, an unexpected ally to say the least. Well, I am content to leave the fine-tuning of the barrier to cleverer minds. Let us bid our friends from the Ironworks farewell, and see what can be done for Alphano back in Dorma.
Our supplies of Black Rose have been ruined, but the new plant is already under construction. We should have the first batch ready in time for the offensive, Your Radiance. See that you do. Ah, yes, the infamous Black Rose. If I recall correctly, Gaius did not much care for the invention. A ruthless and indiscriminate weapon indeed, this airborne poison. It seems you are capable of making decisions worthy of your bloodline. With no gift for sorcery, we Garlians must look to Magitech to even the odds. If it spares the needless deaths of our soldiers and serves the cause of this empire, there is no method I would not employ. How very noble of you. Truly, though, I must commend you for embracing your role as Emperor. You play the part of the determined ruler well. Sometimes, even I catch myself believing. A silent agent of death. Now that I think on it, Black Rose may well possess the perfect aspect. Slowly but surely, the deluge of light has worked upon the ether here in the source, and the gas should be most susceptible to its influence. Well, I shall leave you to your own devices. Go forth and bloody the land with your grand and glorious war. While you do what? Precisely. Need you ask? I will be doing what all Asians do. I am well aware that your kind exists only to usher in the next calamity. But you seem oblivious to the harm your singular agenda causes to the Empire. I cannot have forgotten the events which followed your mortal demise. Our homeland was plunged into civil war for your failure to name a successor. The edifice you so carefully constructed was but a hair's breadth from collapse. Are you truly so naive? You thought me oblivious to the consequences of a departure so painstakingly timed? It was by design? Well, of course it was. Though I will admit the resulting panic exceeded even my wildest expectations. But how can you be surprised? Throwing the world into disarray was the very purpose for which this nation was, as you say, so carefully constructed. Now, if you have no further questions, I must be on my way. Since we may not meet again in this lifetime, it would be remiss of me not to offer a word or two of gratitude. I really must thank you for this surplus of vessels. I can mold any host into my own image, but having bodies tailor-made for me in this fashion is so much less tiresome. You dabbled in elegant cloning techniques, yes? It certainly is a compelling, not to mention entertaining, field of research. 
And of all the options available, you chose the founding father on whom to experiment. You have a twisted streak to you, Varus. Like grandsire, like grandson. Hey. If events play out as planned, this will become something of a family enterprise. You will be the capstone of this world, I the anchor and shard, and together we will give the lie to this star's fraudulent existence. <laughs> <laughs>